Hey, Heidi Ho Lions fans, welcome to the Detroit Lions podcast. This is episode 234. This is the official Detroit Lions podcast for Reddit. I am your dashing host, Chris, doing it live with my good friend and co-host, Dean. Dean Blandino, how you doing, buddy? I'm good. How are you? I'm spectacular. It's been a great week. It's been... It, I can't lie. <laughs> it's It's been a tough week for Lions, for us Lions fans, right? Yeah, yeah, it, it really has. And I'm, I'm really... As usual, really happy you joined us. I, I I give you a lot of credit, Dean. You don't you're not afraid of some tough conversations. And, and over the last year and a half, we've had a lot of them, right? I mean, never pulled punches. You don't run away, and you answered all. It's it's really really great. Appreciate you doing that. So, look ahead to today's show. We're going to talk about the Packers game, the officiating there. We're going to talk about officiating quality in general, and and also talk about what we think might be able to do to help improve the situation. We'll of course take your calls. We'd love to have you call in. You can ask Dean. Whatever you want, of course, we ask you to be respectful, but you can you can you can ask just about anything. So we'll do that. And also at the end of the show, uh, we're going to do the close of the show, but don't go away because we're going to play a great video that we put together with Dean. I think you guys are going to love it. It's really really cool. Got all that a whole lot more. Dean, are you ready to go, man? Ready to go. Let's kick this off and break it down. All right, a couple of quick announcements. First, check us out and help us out on Patreon. A very special thanks to Dylan from. Wow. Oh, very nice. Very nice. And of course, our very first donor, Mathis, Brian Burkheiser from I Prevail, I Prevail Band.com. Check them out. They rock. Uh, all those guys and more are Patreon donors at patreon.com slash Detroit Lions Podcast. As little as a dollar a month will get you involved. You get access to the Slack, uh, the Slack chat, which is the most intelligent Lions chat on the internet. Also, Peter Von Panda is putting up a oh gosh, it's a Sega uh genesis like retro game as a giveaway so we, we're, we're talking about it right now we'll probably end around november 10th anyone who's a patreon subscriber gets every dollar they donate per month they're going to get a uh that and that many entries into the contest to win the sega so check it out patreon.com slash detroit lions podcast and thank you peter von panda and uh you'll you'll love it and we'll love it too we love all your support thank you for that and give us a like on facebook facebook.com slash the detroit lions podcast facebook.com slash the detroit lions podcast instagram detroit lions podcast what else would it be we're going for the most followers without creating a single post we've we're doing pretty good we're doing pretty good and uh we've got a plan for our first post it'll be fun it won't be your face dean don't worry okay thank you <laughs> also on twitter at det lions podcast det lions podcast the very best place to see dean with my ref's whistle and nothing else. Oh, yeah, sexy. Uh, subscribe on YouTube, youtube.com slash Detroit Lions Podcast, youtube.com slash Detroit Lions Podcast. All the, all the great stuff happens there. And don't forget to rate us on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, all those places. Let's get started. This is no time for a quick release. We're going deep. How about that? All right, we got into it. It didn't take too long. I got to get through all the housekeeping stuff. So, Dean, I'm I'm probably gonna use the the cough button a couple of times here today. I'm getting a little sick. My my throat's a little scratchy. So you may have to carry the day again. Are you okay with that? I got it. I got it. <laughs> I figure you're you're the the sickness is is kind of a combination of emotional and physical. Is that it? I'm yeah. spent. I'm spent. It's been a tough week. <laughs> it's emotional. Monday night was very emotional. It was. Um, let's let's kind of talk through that a little bit. Um, we'll just do kind of like an overarching discussion about that, and then we'll start taking calls and uh, let everybody in. First comment in the yeah uh, the YouTube chat. Hi, Sylvania here. People around the world love it. I'm telling you. Ooh. All right. <laughs> Monday night. It was it was quite a uh, interesting thing. A um, couple of illegal hands of the face penalties that were interesting. Not quite the same as maybe the chicago game do you remember that back and i think you were still in charge back then weren't you when oh, yeah. we, we had an illegal face to the hands called on the, the lions um these actually were different than that but probably not as still just as egregiously bad um there was a fumble by carry on this one's an interesting one because i i personally feel like it wasn't a catch before the fumble but let's talk about it and we can get into that a little bit um the no PI call on Marvin Jones that felt a little bit, you know, after after the holding on Tracy Walker for Jimmy Graham. Um, between those two, they they don't line up, right? That you can't do the calculus on that too well. Maybe you can because you you're, you've got that graphing calculator over there. Um, There's a 13 men in the field opportunity when the center had his ball hand on the ball, and um, the 
the hit from uh, Tracy Walker too. Um, that was helmet to helmet, but inadvertent. And and boy, that was that was pretty difficult. So, a lot of crazy stuff going on. Kind of talk us through the game. Just take us through a high level of 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 the yeah. It's here. it's one of those games where you don't look. You never want the, to be talking about the officiating after a game. And this was this was a game where it felt like, and and I've seen this before, where where all of the all of the controversial calls went against one team. And, yeah. and, and again, right? So as a Lions fan, you know this, right, Dean? As a Lions fan, and, and even heard, you even heard, I think Aaron Rodgers made the comment that those things tend to even out over time. And, and they do, but, but you hate to see a game where, A, you have a bunch of controversial calls, and then B, it seems to affect one team negatively. And, and you look at... You look at some of those, yeah, you raise, raise your <laughs> I, I got something really quick. Aaron says they even out because his team is the benefit, number one beneficiary of, of penalty yards at 526. I'm, I'm off by 25 or something probably here. but And the Lions were worst at 246. So I'm, yeah. I'm waiting for that evening, any time for that to kind of. Anytime, right? Any time. When, you're, when you're the first one to be the beneficiary, it always seems like it's going to even out for, for everyone it's else. Right? Even out. It's, yeah. At some point it will. We don't know when, but it 2095. will. 295. And I think. <laughs> Yeah, I, I I do think that you look. The bottom line is, and and I said this, you know, I've said this to other people. I've said this on on my podcast. Is it, this is officiating is hard, and we get the benefit of looking at it in slow motion, in in from multiple angles, and the official gets one look at it in real time. And and I've always said I've said that if you watch a game on TV and you say, well, how could they miss that? Then go down on the field and watch it in real time, and you go. You're amazed at how they ever get anything right. And you had a great call you on, on your show. Good calls with Dean Blandino. Yes. Yeah, yeah, good calls. With Dean, you, you guys, you really should subscribe to that. It's a great show. It comes out every week. Um, but on the show, you had a great. You, you started by talking about quarterbacks, and you, before yeah. you talked about officials, like you're sitting up in the booth or watching on TV or up in the press box, you're saying, "How could he miss that that wide open pass?" And then yeah. you get down on the field, and you're like, "How the hell do they ever even make a pass? How does that happen?" So it's different, it's right? Same, in those, views. yeah, it's the same with officials. Somebody had actually, I'd, I'd seen somebody tweet that watching the game in the press box, and you see a wide open receiver, and you go, "How, how does the quarterback miss?" And then you go down on the field, and you go, "How do they ever complete a pass?" And it made me think. Look, it's the same with officials watching on TV. You get you get a great bird's eye look at it in slow motion, and you go, "God, the the, the hand didn't get it didn't get to the face or it didn't get to the neck. How could he miss it?" And then you watch it. At full speed, when you have two big guys going at it and you see the head go back and is the hand here or is it right up against the neck and you have to make the call in real time. And it, it's it's really difficult. And, and I'm amazed at how good the officials are because even in, even in a game where there was a lot of controversial calls, we're talking about maybe seven or eight plays, there are – thousands and thousands of decisions that are made in each game and 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 the ma overwhelming majority of those decisions are correct but but inevitably there are going to be calls that are because the game happened so quickly and, and they're human beings there's going to be there's going to be some missed calls and and you hate that that that's what we're talking about today versus what what really was an exciting game and a and a, and a really close game uh, in in the end yeah yeah and and let's let's talk about that because we talk the, the the officials just signed their collective bargaining agreement, also known as a CBA, um, and and so they're kind of contracted and locked in and, and making what they make and going forward here till twenty three. What twenty three is it? No, I think till till it's a twenty twenty six. I oh, believe. Okay. Okay. Cool. So that's that one. That one's a done deal. Um, one of the things that has been floated about these kind of things. So again, this illegal hands to the face is one of the big ones that people have talked about all week. And it's interestingly, you know, Lions and Packers, there's, there's, there seems to be a pattern right here in these games where there's these kind of officiating mistakes. It just, it just, as a Lions fan, it feels like that. I'm sure, you know, your Dallas folks and Des caught it and, and they have their kind of serious where they have their confirmation bias kind of thing. Right. But Without the numbers in front of me, I'll, I'll, I'll allude to confirmation bias on that. But um, right there's 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 just a, there is a story around this, and there's a narrative to this that that this tends to happen here. And it's this week when it happened, it really became national. There was a lot of people that were talking about it, yeah. and I got a couple of quotes here. We we played them on the last show, but I want to play them for you and and get your reaction to to what they say. And I'm going to start with Pat 
McAfee, and and he starts and Dan Orlovsky fills in at the end. But this is this is this is a good one, and it's it's got a fun quote in the middle that I, I'm sure you've heard already. You'll, we'll giggle along the way, and then and then we'll hear Dan Orlovsky Orlovsky after. So after, so here's Pat. You, you look back a few years to the replacement refs when there was a lot going on. Everybody was like, "This can't be the norm. We have to get this fixed." This year, it feels like we just have a bunch of replacement refs. Somehow, it has gotten worse than it's ever been, and I I like the you know, find the root of these things. Yeah. You know, I'm a deep digger, a person that likes to find out why things are happening. And for me, I think it all starts with Alberto Riveron being an incredibly terrible leader of men. That's what he is. His official crew underneath him has been nothing but terrible. And I would say, as soon as TV networks like this one start plucking John Perry, incredible right. referee, yep. start plucking Gene Steratore to CBS, incredible referee, Dean Blandino, many wouldn't say incredible, but he's a lot better than what Alberto Riveron's doing. <laughs> Herrera, you name it. These TV networks are just plucking all of the great refs, and we're stuck with crap. We're stuck with junk, and that's why every time a, a, a call goes to review, everybody knows Alberto Riveron's going to get it wrong, because Alberto Riveron wasn't a good ref on the field. Now they put him in charge, and boom, ipso facto, now we got a terrible guy leading this thing. I don't think it's going to get better before it gets even worse, and somehow it's ruining the game. I honestly believe oh. that. Yeah, I remember a couple years ago, there was the conversation that football was going to die because of head injuries. It's not. The issue with football's future is officiating. Ooh. That's the only thing that could be potentially kill football. So, I mean, you'd expect some strong opinions. I, I don't know why they didn't really sure. tell us what we what they felt, but um, there's a lot there, right? So, and this week has elicited this response yeah. that, that that we haven't seen before out of a lot of uh, not just there, but nationally, right? Everyone's seen it, and and even the Saints game elicited a large response, and there's a lot going on there. So, um, it keeps seeming to pile on, and I think Dan is making a really good point here about how this could really and truly negatively affect the game. So let me get Orlovsky in, and then and we'll, and then we'll react. And everyone is giving you great credit for holding your face straight <laughs> during that. And we, we did get the the hashtag hire Blandino to roll through here. So let's hear Dan. Owners, I'm talking to you. You don't have a problem. You have an epidemic. Your product is slowly being ruined by a third party that has no consequence to their actions. And you may not pay a lot of attention to social media, but you should because. Not thousands of people, not tens of thousands of people, but millions of people are unhappy right now. And unhappy people don't spend money. America's favorite sport at times is becoming unwatchable because of bad officiating. And it's not an October 2020 fix. It's not a 2020 fix. It's an October 15, 2019 morning fix. Your product is being ruined. You need to fix this now. That's the reality of this situation. We can no longer come on shows after a really good football game and have to talk about the bad officiating. The Detroit Lions fans and team should not have to go, oh, we should have played better. We, we grew up, it wasn't about, we used to always have coaches tell us, ah, don't let the officials, they don't impact the football game. They're impacting too many football games. And I'm telling you, Fans are sick of it. What is the answer is the question. Every time a flag is thrown, there is somebody up in a booth. It's almost like college football. You either confirm or overturn that flag. That's how college football handles tar targeting. If they throw that flag for Trey Flowers last night, hands to the face, someone in the booth immediately can go, I can confirm that or overturn that right now. It's, it's timeless. You don't have to waste time on it. But we can't consistently go, hey, guys, we're sorry we were wrong. So let me, let's me let go right to the question there from that. Because I think Dan framed it really well and Pat talked about it. And that's the idea of this eye in the sky. We yeah. have the CBA with the refs. I don't know if that's set the tone that we can't do that. Um, we've got our, 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 our refs right now, the top guys in each crew that are walking around. Why not put them in that spot that you talked about where they get that great view, where you can say, how did you miss that call? It's obvious up here. Give them the ultimate authority and take some of the um, the pressure off the guys in the field to actually take pay attention to a lot of the stuff. Because there's so many things going on for those guys to watch, right? They, they, they have computers running basically in their head, checking so many things. What do you think of this concept? And, and how can we make this work? Or will it work? Well, I, you know, it's it's definitely a concept that the league has considered before. And I think... And and I, I love those guys, and I think they obviously have strong opinions, but I don't I don't think they they have 
the background or really understand everything that goes into it because it does it sounds great what dan is saying that oh you have somebody up in the booth you get the replay you confirm it or it will you know not not every call not every game this was a this was a monday night game prime time you have you have a whole bunch of cameras and you have the look you know if we're talking about a a, a one o'clock game on on sunday that might only have eight or nine cameras you're not necessarily going to have the camera coverage for every call so are we going to sit there and wait for for a look to confirm the call so i think you'd have to limit it and and certainly you want to use the technology and uh and and help the officials get these calls right but but you can't have you can't officiate the game look it's it's played by human beings coached by human beings officiated by human beings you can't officiate it from a from a press box with video you have to let the officials call the game and then and then use a sky judge or a video official in a limited form i'm i'm good with that and if we can say it's 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 for all player safety fouls or if you put a time you know inside the last 5 minutes of the fourth quarter because that's a critical point of the game I think I think that's something that's feasible. You have to find the right people. You have to get good quality people that understand officiating, understand the game, and then you have to think about the technology and, and is it is it at a point where you can do it seamlessly? You're not delaying the game because in where do you where do you draw the line in terms of getting every call right and being perfect versus the stops and starts, killing momentum, killing the flow of the game, because that can impact the game. A team has a, has a momentum going, you're driving, you know, you've got the defense on their heels, they're tired, now all of a sudden we're going to stop the game for, for two minutes to look at a, you know, a, a potential hold. And I think that's something you have to consider whenever you look at a, a sky judge or a video official concept. Well, what about the concept of every single flag? Because by the time they come out, they make the announcement, okay, we get ready again. Sometimes there's a TV timeout, whatever. You know, the, the momentum at that point is stopped, right? And I get the whole idea with how we handle challenge flags to and not give unlimited challenge flags so we can, we can give a tired defense a break, right? That would be obviously silly. But when there's a flag thrown, we, the, we're done. We review every score, scoring play, right? We, we re- review every turnover, change of possession, it seems like every flag could could benefit from something like that. Because when we look at this, these hands of the face calls that we got, those are game changers, right? It, can you say that absolutely the Lions would win? No, but you can't say, you know, that they didn't lose because of them. And um, the, the the Saints game, right? Would they have won that game if we reviewed that PI call? We at very good chance. You, you you can't say, but you'll never know. Because the right thing didn't happen on the field, and I think that's what we're after, uh, as as officials and fans and, and and as a league, we want the right calls to be made. We also want the flow and the pace of the game to work, right? And I think that's I think the the issue is still going to be even when flags are thrown. Now, do you are you waiting because officials will will throw the flag, they'll get together, they'll communicate what the flag is, they'll start to administer that penalty. Mm-hmm. Now are we going to wait? Are we going to wait however long, 10, 15, 20 seconds to confirm the call? Now we have to administer the penalty, walk off the, the penalty yardage. Are we further delaying the game in this pursuit of perfection? And not every, you know, are we going to do that? Look, every, every foul impacts the game in some way. Everything that happens has an effect, but is the, is the, the, you know, the illegal hands to the face in the second quarter, is that something we're going to spend a minute, a minute and a half on um, when, when we really should be focusing in, in the critical, real critical situations at the end of the game, those types of things. So no easy answer. I'm, I'm all for mitigating those mistakes and getting them right. I just, it's not as simple as saying somebody up in the booth can look at every foul because sure. as we've seen with past interference reviews, we've seen with other rules, there's unintended consequences and you have to vet those out before you, uh, you implement something like that. Yeah, no. And, and, and absolutely um, smarter people than I would have to vet those, those things out. Right. But let me, let's talk a little bit on McAfee show again today, which was a good one. He had Mike on Mike Pierre. Yeah. I love the I love the backhanded compliment too. Yeah. I'm not not incredible, but I'm better than you know. That's I love. That. <laughs> love that. It's like the, the the Patreon chat, right? I mean, it's the yeah. most intelligent chat on the internet. But it's a 
That's a low bar. Uh, <laughs> think of yourself like the, the Detroit Lions podcast Patreon chat. That'll that'll make it sting a little less, or there you go. maybe not. But um, so on the show today, they were talking about the OTO, official to official, and a communication system that they yeah. have when they're in their ear. Yeah. And one of the things he mentioned, and, and he said, and I didn't know it either, and he wasn't aware of it, that New York is in the ear too, or can be in the ear. And it seems like if they're in there, that they have a, an opportunity to weigh in on different things. It seems like that would be the point where maybe that official sits because we see those. I, I know it's not the official NFL cameras, but we can see the replays on TV and they do a darn good job of showing what's going on in that game. Sure. And it feels like in the course of those plays that those those kind of calls could be could be you know brought in in that OTO to the official without delaying the game. You know, if they had to fix something. Yeah, they do. And, you know, ever since we introduced that wireless communication, then it became the question is, is okay, can, there, can a replay official or somebody from New York be in the official's ear and help out? And then they do do that now. They do help out in certain situations. They, they don't they don't get involved in, in the subjective calls and holding and, and, and face masks and things like that. And, and it is, look, the, for every, for every situation where it's obvious that a call on the field is missed, um, there are so many more where it's, you know, it's not obvious. It's close. Maybe, maybe it was a foul. Maybe it wasn't. And, and are we going to, to, again, stop the game to look at all of those? I think, look, if it's obvious and you can do it quickly, I'm all for it. Let's, let's get it right. Let's get it right. I just don't want to see the game bogged down by by video officiating when when really the rules are written for on field officials to make decisions in real time and, and 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 I think that's where you know the 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 majority of the officiating has to stay. I just again all for getting the obvious ones right and if we can figure out a way to do that I'm 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 in. Let's go back to the the comment he made about he puts you in the top tier, maybe not at the very, very top, okay? But he, you're, you're top tier. But, that's, but the brain drain, we're, we're losing some of the best officials to TV gigs. I mean, I'm sure, I, I'm, you know, <laughs> Mike today was saying, well, I don't want to say too much because I'm in a contract year, you know, about how well I'm getting paid. But there, there's definitely a draw away from the league to take the TV deal. And so, how much do you make? That's no, I'm just joking. Uh, the <laughs> the question is 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 that going to be healthy for the officiating you know universe? Because they're going to pull more and more people away, and and now you know it doesn't feel like there's a whole lot of bench strength underneath for uh, for for officials. And then you're taking the top off off the, the the top tier and the cream off the top. It doesn't leave you with the best drink. Is is there a risk here? Do you think? Well, I think I think where. One of the issues that's come up when you talk about that brain drain is that you've had you've had three of the of the better referees who are still who are still in in the prime of their careers, John Perry, Gene Steratore, and Terry McCauley, leave for network jobs. So so that's not ideal. And and uh, and so you have you have three of your better veteran referees leaving, and that position is so critical to to the crew because they're the crew chief they're the ones that are that are directing that are managing that crew making sure that that the crew is calling the game consistently and at the direction of the league office and the competition committee so i think that's definitely part of it the the league the league just has to continue to to provide resources toward officiating make sure that 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 the officials are getting trained and 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 they they have good direction those types of things and I, and I think they're trying to do that, and they just have to continue to to ramp that up and make sure that they're bringing in the best officials, they're getting the best training, and that you're retaining the best officials. And, and that's that's ultimately what you want. And uh, and I think I think they'll continue to work at that, and and uh, and hopefully, you know, that's you won't see as many veteran officials leave for. And there's only look. There's only so many network jobs, right? It's not. It's not like this is 20, 30 <laughs> officials. This is a handful of officials that just happen to be at a very critical position, at the referee position, and that that has led to have you know in the last two years seven new referees. That's a big number, and then yeah. there's a learning curve at that position for for certain. Okay. Um, let me look here. Uh, let me get the number out. We should probably do that real quick. Let folks call in. The number here is two four eight. 
782-8384. Give us a ring and uh, we'll get you on. We'll let you ask Dean some questions here live. There was we'll... no hookers <laughs> and no blow on that bus. Go. Okay. That's an old quote there. Um, let's, let's, yeah, let's go ahead and open up the phones. We got a call already. Oh my goodness. All right. Hey, caller, what's your name? Hey, it's Lucas. Hey, Lucas. How's it going, my man? Going good. How are you? Good, good. We got Dean here. He, he He's anxious to, to hear your question first. <laughs> Yeah, hey, well, okay, so I just got to say this. As, as a Lions fan, I wouldn't feel like a true Lions fan if I didn't give Dean a little bit of a hard time here. He, he's I, a fan, too. If though. I had told – yeah, oh, I know. If I had told my 2014 self that in 2019 I would wish that Dan Blandino was back as the head official of the NFL, <laughs> I think I would have punched myself in the face. But now <laughs> I'm like, oh, my God, why is he not there anymore? <laughs> <laughs> Miss me yet? <laughs> well, I appreciate <laughs> exactly, that, Lucas. Exactly. <laughs> so I, I have kind of a, a semi and going with that I have a semi joke question leading into a real one if I were to start a GoFundMe Dean how much would I have to get to before you would consider coming back to the NFL I don't and the, don't, the reason I no you can you can start a GoFundMe and then we'll we'll uh, we'll give it to a, a charity of your choice that's fine <laughs> you, don't, you don't need to start a GoFundMe that's, for me <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. Well, and the reason I ask that is it feels to me, and Dean, I don't know if, you know, you were kind of in the middle of all of it, so I don't know if, you know, you'll have a different perspective and all that, obviously, but it feels like anymore, and it's been getting worse through the years, anytime a big play happens, and you see it online all the time, it's like people are waiting for flags now before they can even celebrate. And I, I saw a stat this year that, like, penalties are actually, like, way up compared to last year. And do you think the refs are just getting to the point where they're they're throwing so many penalties that now they're trying to find things specifically to throw for? Or, or is the NFL telling them to throw more? Like, how does that work? Yeah, that's a really good question. I think penalties are definitely up. They're up over two a game this year from from where they were last year and and really historically. And uh, and that's you're looking at okay, why why is that? And there, I think there are a couple of reasons. There's there was definitely a point of emphasis on holding, offensive holding going into the season. And I think, and I think it was somewhat of an overcorrection. I think the officials early on were were calling um, too many holding calls. They had some things that really weren't the intent of the point of emphasis. We we've seen that come down, and I think that has started to regulate itself. I think you see offensive pass interference is up. I, I don't want to I don't want to like touch a nerve here, but illegal use of hands is up this year. Yeah, we noticed. <laughs> <laughs> And, and I think it's not, look, the officials on the field are going to call what they're directed to call. And, and they, they don't, the officials don't go out and because they're being evaluated. They're being evaluated on what they call, what they don't call. So they are going to call what they are being directed to call. The legal, the, the officiating department gives them that direction. The officiating department takes it from the competition committee. So officials don't go out on their own and call things that aren't what they're not being directed to do. Now, again, it's judgment. They see things. They're going to have to make decisions in, in real time. And, and again, I just think we've seen some, some you know, potentially an overcorrection in holding. I think that that has kind of fixed itself. And, uh, and I think we'll see those penalty numbers start to drop, um, uh, you know, toward the, you know, mid to later in the season. And uh, again, it's, it, nobody wants to see a game where there's a whole bunch of fouls, but in an ideal world, it's the two teams that decide how many fouls there are in the game, and the officials are just calling what they see. Um, and, uh, and I think that's right. I mean, we kind of saw that. I think was it the Cowboys Jets? There were like eight flags in a row earlier. Six in the plays, six you plays know, in a row. Yeah, with with penalties. And, and yeah, it was I mean, interesting. It, it, that doesn't feel good either, but it's, it's a hard balance to get. One hundred percent. And and the thing is, and, and it was interesting because that the last play where there was a foul, it was pass interference on the Jets. They showed a replay of the hit on Dak Prescott, and both Romo and Nance were like, "Whoa, that could have been a penalty." So so here you have six plays in a row with with fouls, and now we're saying, "Well, they could have had another one." And so it's where where is that balance? It's tough. Right. Well, I, I appreciate you coming on and answering questions, Dean. Um, I, I, I definitely nice having some insight, even if I don't completely like it, like with Sunday night and <laughs> how awful that was. But I appreciate it, Lucas. All right, Lucas. All right, thank you, guys. Thanks, man. Thanks a lot for calling. Thanks. All right. Hey, now, really quick, I want to talk about um, 
there's a question that came up. It says, so directed by who? So we're talking about holding penalties up and down and so on. Who's who's doing the directing on on where this should be? Is it the competition committee? Well, it starts it starts with the competition committee, and and then the officiating department will take that information, and they will then instruct the, the officials. And so you go through the off season. You look at all the different things. There are points of emphasis, holding, pass interference, whatever it is. And then the officiating department will will then you have you have Al Riveron who's in charge of the officials. He has supervisors who are former officials that will teach the officials. Um, they are evaluated on every play of every game. So that evaluation process is the way that you that you moderate or or, or correct behavior that 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 you think you know if an official if a flag is thrown, it's not correct. You downgrade that official so they don't throw that flag again the next time. And and if they're right, you grade them correct. And uh, and so they continue to call that foul going forward. So so it's really the officiating department at the direction of the competition committee that is going to communicate, you know, to the uh, to the on field the on field sure. crews. All right. Hey, we got a caller. Hey, caller. What's your name? Hey, this is Chris Robbins again. Hey, Chris. How you doing? What, what do you got for Dean today? Pretty good. How are you? Oh, I'm the bomb man. Yeah. So. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I just wanted to give you a shout out. Uh, I really appreciate the work that you guys have been doing at Fox and uh, everywhere else for that matter. I really do like the officiating uh, people on the TV broadcast. It really helps us, at least me, uh, as a fan, understand what's going on in the game and, and certain calls and explanations for calls. So I wanted to start out by saying that, and uh, I really appreciate your work. I've already added you a couple of times on Twitter. but Well, thank you, Chris. Uh, I wanted to tell you that over the phone. Thank you very much. So one question I did have is I wanted to ask you about the new officials that are coming into the league this year, uh, including the Brad Rogers crew that we're supposed to have this week against the Vikings. Yeah. Uh, there's, I think, three new officials. So I wanted to get your take on if the new officials have been doing better or worse, the same, uh, some of the better referees that we've had in the past. Yeah, good question. I think, you know, Brad, Brad is a new, new referee this year. He, he refereed in college. So every, every official that becomes a referee in the NFL does have some, some refereeing experience. They've worked other positions, but obviously they, they work referee in the, in, in the NCAA at some point. And, uh, and I think that, I think the new referees and all the new officials are doing, they're not doing any better or worse than, than other rookie officials. There, there's a learning curve and, and if you talk to officials, it's like it's like rookie players. They're, they're, they, they need time to get adjusted and get reps because the difference between college football and the NFL when you talk about speed, the athleticism of these players, because in college you have, you know, unless it's the Alabamas and the Ohio States, maybe you have one or two guys that are going to the NFL. Everyone in the NFL is the best player in, on their college team. And, uh, and that's the same for the officials. They have to get used to that. They have to, they have to kind of ramp up. And, uh, and I think the, the, the rookie officials are doing, like I said, they're, they're doing well, as well as you can expect from a first year official. And, uh, and I think Brad is somebody that is, is really becoming, you know, he's, he's had five, six games under his belt at the referee position. So each game he's going to learn something and he's going to continue to improve just like, just like in any other profession. So I think, uh, you know, hopefully there'll be a uh, a controversy free knock on wood game mm. coming up with the Vikings. Well, even Dean Blandino had his first year as the vice president of officiating. Exactly. Right? <laughs> yep. So, it happens. Got to get that first year to get to your tenth. All right, Chris. Hey, thanks a lot. Thanks, man. I appreciate Chris. the call. Yeah, yeah, and thank you guys again. Uh, hope to hear from you again soon, Dean, on the All right, take care. Show. Awesome. Thanks. Awesome. All right, you can give us calls 248-782-8384, 248-782-8384, or if you want to use Skype, it's all one word, Detroit Lions podcast. That'll get through as well. All right, so there's there's a little bit of a talk from uh, Mr. Bakhtieri, and this is interesting because most players don't talk about this, and for for good reason, especially if, if they're good at influencing people, they don't want that to get out because then people get a little, little less attuned to their wily ways. Um so he, he he basically tells a story where he 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 tattles on a ref to Aaron because Aaron's who he is, and Aaron then goes and and, and gives a rash to the uh, to the ref, and 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 maybe things happen like these hands to the face penalties that he, he's never been called on in in a very long and illustrious career. 
um, Mr. Flowers. We, we actually met him at Taste of the Lions this year. I forgot about that. Yeah, that was good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, is, is that where we put the curse on? <laughs> so <laughs> what, what, what's the deal here with, with this? How, how much do we know about this? And what do, you, what do you think the effect is? I mean, there's, there's always, I remember the picture of, a, um, of one of the refs lending a hand to Aaron to get up off the ground one time. That was, that was during your time, right, Dean? Sure. Uh, <laughs> I love how you, I, I I love you, Dean. You're a good guy. Um, how do we handle this? I mean, we obviously want no conflicts of interest. We want the the um, appearance to be a completely above board, in addition to actually being above board across across the way. But then we're human beings as well. This yeah. kind of on field influence. What is how much of a part does this play? And and how can wily eyed uh, creatures and hypnotists like Bakhtiari influence these refs? Yeah, I think that's a little bit of, I mean, there's this gamesmanship that happens where, where, you know, typically coaches or players look, they're going to, they're going to talk to, this is not unusual. This happens all the time that, you know, I would get calls, I would get calls from coaches before a game saying, you know, the, the this team, they hold all the time or they do this, they do that. And then you get to the game and, uh, and players will talk to officials about, about certain things and coaches will talk to officials the, the, when, when officials get to the NFL, like I said, the, the amount of scrutiny that is on them and, and how they're being evaluated, they're, they're, not going to, they're not going to allow a player to influence how they call the game. I mean, it's just there's too much at stake for them to go out and, and say because it's Aaron Rodgers or because it's Tom Brady or whoever, they're going to call the game differently. Um, and look, look, there, there's, I'm not in the head of every official. They're human beings. They're foot, you know, they've, they've, they're fans of the game to some extent. Mm-hmm. Um, but you try to weed out the people that are going to be influenced by outside, you know, outside circumstances, you know, outside um, kind of you know, those factors. Yeah. And, uh, and so when they get to, and you talk to officials, they don't see, they, they just see the Jersey color and they, and they, they see offense, defense, you know, it's, it's, it's blue or green, whatever it is, and uh, because they're evaluated. Now, I would say, look, what Bakhtiari did is not unusual. You, you, you talk to an official before the game, hey, watch it, his hands, you know, he, he might be getting his hand up into my face. Um, I would say that official in that game is a veteran official. He's worked Super Bowls. He's not going to make a call because a player um, kind of tried to, try to politic or try to get him to make that call, and regardless of who that player is, it just, just doesn't happen. Sure. Okay. So the player believe seems to believe that that's what the, what happened, and and we do know that there was. I mean, the NFL admits to one. There's likely two bad calls there, or at least one that was offsetting and a bad one. Um, and we'll get to you one second here, Brett. Um, I'll let you think about it in a, a minute. Like, so now we've seen this situation where we've got a couple of things with with a single official in a single game, and it was super impactful. And we we've seen kind of the fallout. Let's talk about what kind of the process is in the NFL after that happens. But for, yeah, so, got, let, let's let's get Brett here. Yeah. He's he's been, he's been on the phone waiting. Um, so we'll get back to that. Brett, how you doing, man? Oh, hey, how's it going, Chris? Good, good. Hey, Dean, there with you? That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, he's all right. Yeah, I'm here. What's up? He's right. behind protective well, glass. I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> I have not been able to listen to it live, so I, I'm not sure we guys have already talked about. I'm driving home. Mm-hmm. But so the question I actually wanted to bring up, especially with Dean, had nothing to do with the phantom calls or non-calls. My specific question, and if it's already been addressed, I apologize, but the pylon cam on the Lazard touchdown clearly shows his knee down well before the goal line. And if every play is reviewed, what I can't figure out is why that wasn't first and goal inside the one. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I can, I can assume how that, you know, how that happened. Look, the pylon cam clearly showed that, that the knee was down, the ball was short, he was contacted, and uh, and so the ball should have been inside the one, and 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 they should have looked at that because it's a scoring play, and all scoring plays are automatically reviewed. Uh, to be honest with you, they, I think they just missed it. They they went through the angles that were available. And uh, and they didn't look at that pylon angle, and and they confirmed the ruling on the field, and 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 allowed the score to count. It, it shouldn't have counted. It should have been first and goal at the you know whatever it is the half yard line. And I, I think they just missed it. They didn't go through the they didn't go through the right process and and, and see that angle and, and identify that he was down short. Now was 
Um, two things on this, and, and thank you, Chris, for the uh, in the in the live uh, live chat. Uh, one explanation was that he never uh, completed the process of the catch until he was across the line. Um, I don't know, knee down touched. I, even if the process continues after that, it seems like that's where the down point is. The question I have though is. Do the the officials, New York and wherever they're making these calls up in the booth, do they have all of the same angles that the TV does? I mean, are yeah. they 100% shared? So, so that's a good. So the first point, the first part is, well, the rule is is control, and he doesn't have to complete the catch. It's con if I have control and I'm touched, as soon as the knee hits, I'm down. Even if it, even if I complete the catch later. And uh, and so he he's down by rule. The other thing is yes, they they have access to, they really what they're bringing in is the program feed, and and so that's basically what everybody's watching at home. It's the same feed, and and the only difference is when we're at home watching the game and we see the the, the commercials, mm -hmm. they don't see the commercials. They see whatever the truck is queuing up, and so they can actually look at uh, additional additional in angles during the break that we won't see at home, but they'll. Hopefully the, the truck will then show those angles when we come back from break. So, so they're not looking at anything um, different or have access to any additional camera angles that that we don't have when we're watching that that broadcast. Interesting. I know somebody who does a satellite uplink starting with the Senior Bowl um, for the NFL through the Super Bowl, and uh, she she does Senior Bowl. Uh, actually, the Shrine Game is where she starts doing that. I'm going to start having a look at the folks in the truck because maybe they're the ones not giving the angles. Maybe those are the folks wearing the wrong jersey colors and not the officials. Well, themselves. you know, that's yeah, it's funny you say that. That's when you get to the national coverage, that's never an issue. Go watch some preseason games when it's local, and then I'll, I'll you may get some of that. But uh, most of the national stuff, they're they they know what they're looking at. They're trying to get the best angle. But also, look, and that's the balance between TV as as a as a producer and a TV truck. Replay is not my first priority, right? I'm trying to, to, I'm trying to basically put on a show and entertain and make it the most aesthetically pleasing um, experience. And, and replay is certainly a part of it, but it's not my first, my first priority. The ratings. All right, cool. I do have another question. Sure thing. Go, go, go ahead, man. Okay, so there, I read an article today where they said somebody, the NFL, needs to put somebody out front of things like this other than Al Riveron and no offense to Al and and obviously your name was brought up as being somebody who's good on TV and is good at explaining things is the door open at all to go back in a, in a different role whether it's VP of officiating or something else hashtag hire Landino well, you know, I'm I'm flattered that people would think yeah, I'm flattered that people would think that it's kind of a it's kind of a role where when you're doing it, people think you're not very good, and then you leave, and they're like, oh, that guy wasn't that bad. <laughs> Cue up the Cinderella song, right? <laughs> but, um, you know, I'm very happy doing what I'm doing. I really enjoy it. I get to do things like this that that I didn't have the opportunity to do when I was with the NFL. I, um, you know, never say never, but I'm very happy doing what I'm doing. Okay. There you go, Brent. There you go. We'll, we'll let you go on that one. But uh, we can say probably that was full redemption right there for Dean. <laughs> that was one of those moments, right? Please come back. Just Please. Look, it's, it's, uh, it's 615 Eastern on October 16th, 2019. I will never, I'll write it down. I'll never <laughs> Tattoo. Get a, you should show off that sleeve a little bit. A lot of people don't know you have that. There you go, little, yeah. Uh, your little tattoo on the arm there. Um, okay, so let's get back to the the where we left off with that that question. Um, what what what's the thoughts on? Um, I lost it. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, it was. It was it was originally about the influencing of of players by the um, by the or the refs by the players. And then we went somewhere else. That's okay. We can we can pick that up. Let me let me do something else here. Then we'll we'll move on, and it'll come back. I'm sure. Let's talk about the the collective bargaining agreement for the players. Is there anything that they could do if they? I mean, because I I think they have a an argument, a persuasive argument. And I have to admit, I talked to our our lawyer Mona about this. Um, for number one, for player safety, if we have officials that are missing calls, oh, I remember it was. Well, we'll get to the CBA thing next. Hold on. Um. We have a process now. We see what happened to Jeff or with Jeff making the calls. And I don't want to make this about Jeff 
because I'd rather talk about the the process itself, okay? But yeah. this is this is a good one to kind of look at because we had a couple things in a game and they were impactful and all those things and the national attention, the whole deal. So what's next when somebody makes a series of mistakes in a high profile game? What's this review process like? And then like, is there tiered quote unquote punishments along the way? I know we've talked before and you said, yeah, officials can be fired and i'm not saying this guy should be fired don't don't anybody get crazy about this stuff um but but what's the process and how does it escalate is it like a three strikes you're out how does how does this whole thing work behind the scenes well yeah i well and i also i appreciate now you don't want anybody to get fired but when it was fire blandino that was you know hashtags everywhere but that aside we we're past that past that the the process is the same. And, and I think whether it's a primetime game or, or not a primetime game, the process is the same that, that a, an officiating supervisor is going to go through that game and they're going to grade every call that was made. And the league has already come out and said that, that, that I believe the second one, they've already come out and said that was not a correct call. But do um, we, I don't know that we believe it, but okay. I mean, that's they, they, they left the, the first one open to interpretation. I, I think, look, there's gonna, a public face, I think, and a private face on, on this yeah, thing. Yes, there is. And I think the, the, the official, the officiating supervisor will evaluate that game. And that official is going to get a, a report and every call that he made calls that he should have made. And that all goes in. It's cumulative and it, and it goes throughout the season. And, and if you have, and it doesn't matter the, the, there isn't, there isn't a, a kind of a, a, uh, a higher downgrade if the call was, you know, on third down and it should have been, uh, you know, a punt or whatever it is, or a scoring play. The, the grades are pretty consistent. Um, not They're not based on the situation. But that those grades go into whether that official is going to get a postseason assignment, whether that official is going to get brought back for the following year. So there are ramifications. And that's what – the only thing that bothers me about what – what people say on on some of these shows is that officials aren't held accountable because they are. And and you know I've fired officials. Al has fired officials. Officials, you know, they 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 lose out on postseason assignments. They lose out on a on a lot of things when they don't when they don't perform. So there's definitely accountability. I just think that people want they they want some kind of you know they don't see it right. They don't they don't. It's right, not publicized. Right. They want a public hanging. They, exactly. We want to, you know, bring somebody into the town square and tar and feather them and all that good stuff. It's just the, the league doesn't, because again, these are human beings. And, and, and the reality is, is that we've had situations where officials, their families have been threatened. Their, their kids are, are harassed at school. And that's not, that, that's not good for anybody. And no. so, you know, officials are held accountable. They do lose their jobs when they don't perform. It's just, it's not just, it's not something that is, that is publicized. Yeah. And that's really you know, the so biggest. On, honest question. Are they regularly drug tested like the players are? Yeah, they are. They, okay. they get, they get drug tested. That's part of their CBA. Um, it's random. So, so an official, you know, they'll get, a, they'll get notified the, the morning of a game that they, they're going to be drug tested and they have to, and they have to, you know, do what you do when you get drug tested. And then, and if something comes back that a band, then, then there are ramifications to that. And uh, so just like the players, um, it, they are tested. Yep. Okay. And then um, is there a process for uh, someone to move from a ref to a line judge? If they, if they, is there like a demotion process through, through the, 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 the kind of hierarchy of the, the officials? Yeah, that, that has happened in the past where you have a, a, a head referee that is just not working out at that position. And it is, it is, they're all important, but the referee is because of what they do or, or, or really critical. And, uh, and that has happened. Hasn't happened recently. I'd probably say the last time might've been 10, 11 years ago, mm -hmm. but where, where a head referee went to another position cause they just weren't cutting it at the referee position, but they were really good at, at their other position. And, sure. and so that has happened and, and that's still something the league can do if, if they feel the need. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it's funny. I mean, and it's I know, in a weird way, right? We invest so much in, in this game and it's, it's, it's just, it's your heart and soul and your team. 
And and the idea of screaming for, for people's jobs, it's like, you know, Karen going to the manager at McDonald's because the cheeseburger was messed up, right? I want I want this person's job. Obviously, people are a lot more attached to, to their football teams and invest more of themselves and, and money into into their local team and so on. So there, there's a little bit more passion than, than, than to a cheeseburger, right? But still, yeah. at the end of the day, you're talking about human beings and their jobs, and it's very public. And, I mean, there, there's an element of respect that they deserve. And even if... if I think there's, you know, the accountability, you you want the public hanging, but I think what there's not enough communication about that process and the things that they do do when, when things aren't working out. And I don't know what the, the, how the, how, what the right way is to handle that, but I feel like people need to understand that those wheels turn behind the scenes and things happen. And, And like I said, I don't know how to give visibility to that. All right, and and one other thing about Jeff, he he was was it last Super Bowl? He was he was in, in uh, he was a ref or is it prior? Uh, I don't know if it was. Uh, he's worked a Super Bowl recently. If it wasn't last year, it was probably in the last two to three years. Okay, yeah, there you go. I mean, I mean, the guy, you, you didn't hurt, you never heard of him most of you till t- till Monday night. So, uh, and maybe it was Tuesday morning before you heard of him. We got a caller. Hey, caller, what's your name? Hey, Chris, this is Kevin, uh, also known as Wisco Boiler. Oh, Wisco. Oh, you, you notice I've got a white claw going, right? At your behest. I was just going to ask you my first question. Is what your, uh, what's your favorite flavor? Uh, lime. I think it's part of the, okay, the Florida man thing. That's this, this white claw thing has taken over. I, I, I did not. I went to a wedding in Madison, Wisconsin in June. I had not heard of white claw, and everybody was drinking white claws. And now it's like. I can't. I can't get away from it. It seems to start in Wisconsin because Wisco here is the one that turned me on to it. They're all right. I mean, they're, they're not nothing spectacular. I'd prefer like a good Bavarian wheat beer, like an Andex, but they don't export that. But yeah, it works. It's 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 good when you're when you have to talk a lot. So what yeah, do you got for us, buddy? You know, if you're trying to watch your figure, <laughs> I'm trying to figure my watch. We'll figure the rest of that out later. What do you got, man? Uh, I've got a question for Dean. Um, I was actually at Lambeau on Monday night. It was fun for a while. But uh, one of the things that happened was the um, the Tracy Walker hit on Geronimo Allison that uh, yeah. knocked him out. And that was unfortunate. And to be there, um, that entire stadium wanted a shot at Tracy. But, you know, that was just one look at the replay. That looks pretty incidental. That's not something where he's purposely trying to hurt the man. And I know we're making all these rules for player safety and the rule is written. Any helmet to helmet contact is, you know, um, unnecessary roughness, but is, are we going a little bit too far there? Should there be a line where if it's an accident, it's an accident. It is football after all. Yeah. I, I think, you know, looking at that play and, and, and I know, and there was even a pool report where the referee explained that call to me, that is incidental contact, and that's part of the, the, the rule where if a player is making a legitimate attempt on the football, and I thought that's what Walker was doing. He was trying to intercept the pass, and, and there is helmet-to-helmet contact or contact, forceful contact to the head-neck area. It's not a foul because he's attempting to make a play on the ball, and he has a right to the path of that football, just like the receiver does, and sometimes we lose sight of that. I didn't think that was the correct call. I thought it was incidental. Obviously, it happens in full speed. The official on the field sees the contact and, and throws the flag. But, but I really thought that 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 was incidental. And I would, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to get anyone's hopes up. But I would imagine that 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 there will not be any fine for that hit for for Walker. I th- I just thought he was making a play on the ball, and the contact occurred as a result of that. And I didn't think it was about. How much do you think that because this came up in the chat and I think it's an interesting thought. How much do you think they throw the flags for the results rather than the intent? Yeah, they're not supposed to. You don't officiate the aftermath. You officiate what actually happened. And and look, and it's it's hard. It's hard to sit there and watch a player get get knocked unconscious and and to not throw my flag. You know, that's that's a thing where you have to be disciplined in that note. It wasn't a foul, regardless of the outcome. You never, you, we, we don't ever want to see a player injured like that, or we don't ever. But, 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 like we just said, that, that this is a, it's a, it's a game where there are collisions like that from time to time. The rules are in place to protect the players from unnecessary risk, where a player is truly, you know, he's truly making an attempt to to go after and, and, and initiate that contact to the head neck. This I thought was just, you know, a result of two guys playing the ball and they just collided. 
it's unfortunate, but you, you never want your officials to officiate the aftermath. They need to look at what happens, apply the proper rule and, and make the call based on that. Yeah. No, that's fair. Anything else, Wisco? Oh, no. Just thank you guys for all you do. Really appreciate it. No, thank you, bud. All right. Thanks, man. We'll see you. All right. He's one of our Patreon guys. That was good to get a call from. Okay. So let's talk about that CBA thing. What, what piece of the CBA could the players use to maybe up the officiating? The argument being player safety. If calls are not being made that are important, player safety could be at risk. The other argument is, and, and this is to get influence, players, player, um, um, players' rights, kind of a thing. Um, players have what is a two point three year average career in the NFL. I mean, their 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 term is yeah. Short. There's a lot of there's a lot of stats and numbers around that. Typically, it's you know between the two and three on on a roster or on a, on a yeah yeah. So they they don't have much time to prove themselves, and bad calls can cost them their career, right? I mean, all of a sudden, and, and even in their contracts, like if if Trey Flowers has a uh, a sack number or a penalty number that's part of his compensation. And, and you get these calls like this. This this definitely affects the players directly. Sure. How much could they leverage the CBA to – because it is in their best interest. They've worked their whole lives to get to this point, and And the least they can ask for is is a fair – set of officiating so let's let's talk about the eye in the sky thing just as a as a straw man for this argument they decide that they want the eye in the sky implemented and they put that could they put something like that in the cba to force the nfl to to meet I, they, they certainly could uh, you know i i haven't that hasn't been something in the past in previous cba negotiations but they certainly could put that and say that this is something we want because like you said this affects certainly safety is going to be the most compelling argument mm -hmm. and then it gets into the other stuff. Um, I, I think the the players, the rules committee, the competition committee, that process, they do take the players' input very seriously. And there's there's a meeting at the combine where the players' association reps from the players' association attend that meeting, and uh, and they have discussions about what the league is thinking about doing rules wise, and and they can provide input. So. Um, I think that's where they have that voice to be able to impact changes to the game or, or things that can make the game safer. But certainly it's not out of, out of the realm of possibility for the Players Association to say, we want a video official sky judge um, for X, Y, and Z. Uh, I haven't heard any rumblings of that, but, but certainly it certainly is something that, that could that could happen. The downside of it is, is now it gives the owners a another bargaining chip, right? Anytime you ask for something, it gives the other side a bargaining chip. Yeah, then chip. you have to give something back, sure. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, interesting thought. Um, the the safety thing, I think, is the the big one on that. I, I don't know that they'll take that route, but I think that's that's. I mean, people talk about. We've got. I had some a bunch of calls from people, and I've seen it. Like I said, this this time more than than I'd ever seen. After um, you know a controversially officiated game, not just for the Lions but but nat nationally, people saying I just I'm, I'm, it's disheartened me. It's taking me away from the game, right? Because I just can't watch this like this anymore. And I mean, I don't know what kind of data. I know you have all the data about how many holding calls there's been and all that kind of stuff. Um, is there data around these kind of like missed calls or these errors in in? In the game that the the league keeps, can they can they look at this and say, boy, maybe maybe the fans they're not just feeling it, but this is really happening, and and we've got to do something about it. Yeah, they they keep so in all of those evaluations we've been talking about, they keep track of all the downgrades and all the missed calls, and so you'll look at you'll look at offensive holding and you'll say, okay, we're we're at ninety two percent on holding, we're at eighty five percent on offensive pass interference. Okay, we got to get better at offensive pass interference. So they keep track of all those things. I, I don't know, you know, typically when you look at the, the, the calls that are graded, officials grade out, you know, somewhere in the 95, 96% range. So when you, when you, when you, whatever you're doing, if you're 95, 96% accurate, you're pretty good. Um, not every mistake gets downgraded because sure. maybe an official couldn't see it. Maybe they got screened out just at the, at the, at the right time. Um, so, but the league does keep track of those things. And if there is a, if there is kind of an uptick in, down, in, in, in wrong calls, they're going to, they're going to address it. There's no question. Awesome. Okay. So keep track of it. Yeah. All right. We got a caller. Caller, what's your name? Steve. Hi, Steve. How you doing? Doing good. How you doing, Chris? Good, good. Got Dean here. He's, he's taking all your questions. Be nice. Hey. Be nice. <laughs> 
Howdy, Dean. I got a question for you. Yeah. What would you do? What do you think? Do you have any suggestions, any ideas yourself as to what could make it easier on the officials to not uh, screw up a game like they did Monday? Well, yeah, I think I, I do think that we've, the, we've got to do a better job simplifying simplifying the game for the officials. And and I think when when you when you change rules for for one isolated situation that may not happen for the next ten years, I think we end up with bad rules like that. And I think changing a bunch of rules rules every year, the officials have to have to learn them. They have to adjust, and and there's a learning curve there. So I think simplifying it, not not changing a whole bunch of rules every year, reducing the variables. I, I think if you reduce the, the variable, if I have to consider eight nine different things on every play. Um, that my my chances of making a mistake go up. Where if I can focus on one or two things, and and be you know excellent at those those one or two things, then we're going to be more successful. So I think simplifying the game, not changing a bunch of rules, and just providing the right resources, making sure you're hiring the best officials, they're getting the best teaching and training, and uh, and I think that 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 would go a long way to um, you know fixing some of the you know the issues that that do come up from time to time. As far as you know, be behind the scenes there in the NFL, I mean, is there any chatter that, that echoes that sentiment? I think so. I would hope so. I think there's a lot of smart people at the league office and, and around the league, and I think they understand that concept. And, uh, and, and, again, I think the league has to just continue to provide the right resources for officiating. And, and look, these what we're dealing with now, it, it just shines a spotlight on it, how important officiating is to this game and and i think you want to make sure that it's as as good as it possibly can be and, uh, and i think the league obviously i think they understand that okay I, one last thing because i just want to kind of put a little emphasis on on that because uh, you know publicly we hear the nfl come out and they don't really you know they don't say this is okay this is a problem and we need to fix it they don't come out and say that they they support the refs they say it's a hard job but Again, behind the scenes, is there, I mean, are they thinking, okay, we've got a big problem here and we need to do something about this stat? Yeah, I, you know, I don't know everything that's going on behind the scenes. The league is never going to come out and, and just, it, it just doesn't, it doesn't make sense to every week say, yeah, we blew this one, this one, this one, because that undermines the credibility of, of, of the officials. But I don't know exactly what's being said behind closed doors. I do know the timing of the game Monday night, um, with all of the all of the kind of the 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 chatter around it. There was a league meeting yesterday and today in Florida with with ownership and 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 club presidents and league and the commissioner and everybody else. So I would. I would be shocked if officiating wasn't part of the discussion behind closed doors because, you know, everybody's talking about it. And, uh, and, and I think that's kind of, um, you know, something that the league is, is obviously going to look at. Okay. Much appreciated guys. I'll let you get back to it. Thanks. Thanks. Steve. Appreciate it. Thanks Steve. All right. So uh, really quick, how, how, how we, we know Martha's a wonderful owner, but how is it to deal with her? And this, when something like this happens, I know you weren't around when, when she was ownership, but um, like I guess the Lions organization asking about the, the organization themselves, because a lot of people there's this it's a meme, really. Oh, the Lions will never do any good until the Fords are gone. And it's the, the Fords. It's not like they're not spending money. It's not like they are influencing this thing in a, in a negative way. They've got top shelf business people and football people and in those positions. Um, the organization, the, the Lions organization, how are they and, um, compared to other organizations when things like this happen? Cause I'm sure you have some experience with this. Yeah. I, you know, I always had good experience with the Lions organization during my time, um, as, as the head of officiating the, that was during kind of Jim Caldwell era. And, and so dealing with coach Caldwell, always positive that, that he, he wasn't a guy that was going to be too up or down. He was, he was pretty common sense and, 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 um, but dealing with, you know, I've dealt with Bob Quinn, I've dealt with ownership. It's, it's, it's a great organization and, and I never had any, any real issues dealing with them as it pertained to these, these, you know, officiating things. 
and uh, and I think that's something you know all Do they strongly represent the case though for the organization yeah, that's the thing we want well without question I mean I would there's no question that I would get you know whether it's emails or text messages from people in the organization about different things and uh, and that's you know there are a lot of other organizations that are like that so the, the Lions are not a you know they're not one of those organizations that that isn't kind of they don't they care about this they obviously care about about the, how the team is doing and the success of the team and when things are are not going well um whether it's officiating or whatever else they're 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 invested yeah yeah okay cool all right we'll uh, give you guys a chance to uh, get a call in uh here before we we, we close out uh one thing i want to tell you as after we do we do the normal wind down of the show stay on uh, youtube folks you'll get a chance to uh See a great video that we put together with Dean earlier this year, kind of give you a sense of this redemption arc that he's going through and how much he cares. I'm telling you, he cares. So again, 248-782-8384, 248-782-8384. And, and I want to ask you, Dean, one question. It's, it's a, uh, a personal question. Um, back to your, looking back to your time with the NFL, if, if you look through your whole career, we all have things that we regret, right? I mean, things we've done are like, ah, God, that was stupid. What's the, what's the one thing that if you could change it, you would from your time with the NFL? Um, you know, they're always there. They're, I would always go back and look at, look at certain calls that, that I was involved with when replay came back to the league office. So there, there's always going to be those calls, a handful of calls that I would have liked to have had back. Um, Des Bryant is not one of them, Thank but you. it's, it's, <laughs> you know, I think overall, it's you know the probably it's just the the ability to be um, just more transparent about things and 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 trying to to I feel like we could have pushed a little bit further to try to just kind of help people understand what goes into this that 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 look we're gonna we're gonna be transparent if mistakes were made but to just try to continue to humanize these officials. And, and help people understand what goes into it, the teaching, the training, all the hard work. Um, you know, I, I, I wish, you know, I could have done more uh, on to that end. I, I hope the league continues to push that, um, you know, as become, pertains to individual calls, there were, there were definitely a handful of calls that I would have liked to have done over. Sure. Um, and, uh, but again, I think it's more big picture than that and just continuing to uh, continue, you know, showing what what goes into this and how hard officials, you know, how to, how hard their job is, and making sure that they understand that they're supported yeah. um, by, by the league office. Yeah, I'll tell you, from my perspective, in this in this kind of thing that we were almost five years into into the whole podcasting thing with this, um, I, I learned a lot from you. And, and you mentioned the fire Blandino, Blandino hashtag thing earlier, and now we're on you know hashtag fire Blandino. Um, it, it, the, the thing that I learned, and it was great, it's, and it's because of you, is it's really about judging the separating the the man from the job, and I think that's a that's a lesson. Having now kind of walked through that, I think it's something that if I can help share that with other people, that's the thing. This official is probably not a horrible human being. I, I don't know him, so I can't say hundred percent, but most people aren't like patently evil. And uh, they're, they're separate the job from the man and, and we'll look for the right kind of accountability. And we want to demand the change that makes these things work out appropriately in the end. But um, until then, we'll, we'll keep we'll keep with it. we got a caller. We'll take this last call. Caller, what's your name? Hey, Alex. Uh, is Alex you say? Yeah. Hey, how you doing, man? What's up? Hey, I'm, I'm all right. I'm recovering from that, uh, that brutal screwing right now. Uh, I just, I just wanted to call in, man, because I hate Aaron Rodgers. That dude has got to be the biggest douchebag in the world. <laughs> he struts around like he did something special when he got outplayed by Matthew Stafford. And dude, I'm so pissed because they keep saying Matthew Stafford knew needed to do more. I mean, what more could you ask? His receivers kept dropping the ball. You had Carry On Johnson. Or, Dropping a, a, a first down that would have got him in field goal range. I'm just gonna be pissed if uh, like the Fords get upset with Bob Quinn and Patricia, and they don't make the playoffs, and they try to go with a, a different route where you're stuck in a quagmire in the last two decades, three decades, or since 1962 or whenever the last championship. It's just ridiculous. <laughs> 
because I'm freaking, I remember the time that freaking Aaron Rodgers bullshitted that face mask to get him an extended play on the, on the, uh, on the, uh, here. It's just like, why does this always happen to the Lions against the Lions? I lost money on that game because I thought, dude, I really think the NFL was rigged. I wish, I wish Congress stopped bullshitting on this uh, Trump thing and investigate the NFL and find out if this thing was rigged. Like, do something serious. Anyways, that's my two cents. Just wanted to throw it in there. All right. No, I appreciate it, man. Thanks a lot. You? Have a good one, dude. Thanks for calling. Sure. All right. Okay, we got the investigation, little X Files theme. Okay. <laughs> I don't know if there was a question in there. He wasn't really interested in the officiating evaluation process. <laughs> no, no, I don't think he was. Um, you're a big fan of Matthew Stafford, though, too, right? Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. All right, cool, cool. All right, I think that's going to do it, folks. Remember, we got a great video here for the YouTube folks after the show is over, so we'll get to that. It's a great thing Dean put together with us, and uh, I think you guys will love it. Uh, remember, we need your involvement. Use the comments in the server to give us your feedback. Also, don't forget about us on Patreon, patreon.com slash Detroit Lions Podcast. As little as a dollar a month, any, anything, a million dollars is good too, but uh, you get access to the Slack chat and some other great stuff as well. Uh, and we're doing a giveaway of a great Sega uh, Genesis uh, throwback gamer. Uh, that Peter Van Panda is bringing. So we'll, we'll check that out as well. Check us out on Facebook, facebook.com slash the Detroit Lions podcast. Instagram, where we're trying to get the most followers without ever putting a post up, Detroit Lions podcast. And of course, on Twitter, the very best place to see Dean with just a referee's whistle and no. Just as is, just two thumbs, this guy. <laughs> It's at DET Lions Podcast. Uh, be sure to go to DetroitLionsPodcast.com. Subscribe to the podcast so we can show up in your ear holes automatically. Jiggly. And thank you for tuning in. We're going to see you next time on the Detroit Lions Podcast. Remember, no pants, no toasters, no hot tubs, no problems, baby, because we're your Detroit Lions and Reddit connection. All right. Stay tuned, YouTube folks, for this wicked cool video. <laughs>See you. You're, looking, you're not looking good. What's I mean, up? You're a sight for sore eyes. I am. I know you don't hear that too no, often, but I'm happens, telling you, no. you are. I'm just. I'm here in Detroit. I got my Verners, and you know me. I I want to make up with Detroit. Yeah. I tried to make up with Detroit. You know how that went. The home of the oldest ginger ale company in the country, Vernon's. I love ginger ale, and it's the second largest theater district in the United States, second only to New York City. I. Love Detroit. I try to make up for my makeup uh, with yeah. Detroit. That yeah. was even worse. This week I try to make up with Detroit with Lions fans and I screwed it up because I mispronounced the name Verners. Verners is the oldest ginger ale company in the country. And just to show you that I'm serious, Detroit, we went all over Los Angeles and we found some Verners. I'm tired of, you know, riding around the city in the trunk of a car. I, I want to see the city. I want to meet the people. I want to make this work. Can you help? Yeah, it's good news is you're getting out of the trunk of the car. It's not Hoffa style. So yeah, yeah, there's exactly, room here to work exactly. with. So tell you what, let's take you around the city. Let's introduce you to some people, some things, yeah. and uh, show you what's awesome. up. Let's do all right. it. All right. Cool. This is going to be awesome. Dude, it's going to be wait. great. Yeah. All right, I'm just going to... No, no, keep you right in the front. I don't have to ride in the trunk? No, no. No, this is Detroit. We're going to make it all right. I can ride in the passenger seat? You got it, buddy. This Come is going to be awesome.
So you're watching and all of a sudden the flag comes out, everybody goes crazy. You think it passed interference, it's clear as day. You think they're gonna win a playoff game. It's finally gonna happen, first time since 1991. And then it's surreal. Everybody starts talking and the ball gets walked back. They pick up the flag and you're like, how in the world is this? What a day. Man, it's been a big one. What a day. You did it though, man. We've been all around town. You met people. Yeah. You've done I didn't realize how, how actually cool a city Detroit is. I told you. I, I feel like I'm part of it now. Yeah, you, I can see it in your eyes, yeah. right? Yeah. You're definitely part of, the, yeah. part of the scene here. So what, is it anything left? Yes, anything? there's a quiz. There's always a, a quiz. quiz. You can't just get away with okay. being cool around town once, right? Quiz. Yeah, do the whole thing. So got it. first question, did Calvin catch that ball? Absolutely. Okay, we're gonna call Chicago about that one. Yeah, Let him yeah. know, all right? All right, what about uh, Dez? Did he catch it? <laughs> what do you think? Dez, did incomplete all day long. Incomplete till the day I die. All right, the last one. Dallas, flag's there, it's picked up. You know, I thought about this. That, that flag should not have been picked up. That was pass interference. Lions got screwed. There you go, that's it. You got it, man. Yes! 100% Detroiter, it. man. Welcome to town. Let's eat. Let's have some buddies. All right. Hey guys, welcome to Buddy's hey, Pizza. What's up? Can I start you guys off with something to drink? Yeah, absolutely. I feel so good. I'm gonna have, we're gonna celebrate and I'm gonna have some Vernons. Vernons? 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 What a loser. Jesus, it's just freaking ginger ale. The Lions facility, we're here. We're finally going in, guys. We're here, home of the Lions. And Q, 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 Q. 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 Q.